Hey, what's going on everyone? Today, we're going to talk about the Qantas ecosystem. Hi, my name is Kui, and today I'm going to give you a broad overview about how the Qantas ecosystem works, and I'm going to talk about exactly how each of these characters play a role in the Qantas ecosystem. So the three main characters are the miners, the coin hodlers, uh, or token holders, the dApp developers. So to begin, we're going to talk about the miners first. So in order to mine on Coinos, you have to burn coin to acquire a token called VHP or virtual hash power. So miners on the Coinos blockchain have two main purposes. The first is to produce blocks and the second is to participate in governance. And so first we're going to talk about what they do to produce blocks. Now a Coinos miner has to run a mining node, but the mining mode doesn't work unless they have virtual hash power. And the only way to get virtual hash power is to burn coin and acquire the VHP token. So VHP stands for virtual hash power. Without VHP, you cannot mine on Coinos. So that means if you're new to Coinos and you're interested in mining on Coinos, then the only way for you to begin is by first acquiring coin tokens. Now, prior to mainnet launch, there was a full two years of distributing the coin token through Ethereum. But because coin is now on mainnet, those tokens are now no longer use and you must acquire mainnet coin tokens. Let's talk a little bit about the return on burn. Once you burn coin to receive VHP, whether or not you mine, it's very difficult to turn that VHP back into coin without mining. There are going to be some liquidity pools out there that provide you in exchange for VHP back to coin without having to go through mining, but do expect that there will be a loss in that trade. Anyone who wants to convert VHP directly back to coin can do so only through mining. And the real question here is how long does it take to convert that VHP back to coin? Well, once you burn, it may take up to one year to convert the VHP back to coin. And that time premium is the discount on converting VHP back to coin. If you're not willing to pay the discount, then you have to go through the actual mining process to convert that VHP back to coin. Because someone at the end of the day has to do the work. And so there's always going to be a cost if you're not willing to do that yourself. So expect to spend up to one year converting that VHP back to coin. If you're not willing to do that, simply don't burn and don't participate in mining because you may want to use your coin on decentralized applications or you want more coin liquidity to trade on a decentralized exchange or a centralized exchange. The next thing to talk about here is the APY. The APY on Coinos is based on the virtual supply and the number of miners out there. So when I say the more miners, it's not really about how many miners there are, but more so about how much VHP each miner has. And so if there's more VHP competing to gain rewards from inflation, then you're going to get less rewards because there's more competition. How much reward is available is based on two factors. One, it's based on the virtual supply, and two, it's based on inflation. So inflation is hard-coded at 2%, and the only way this can be changed is through a governance vote by the majority of users in the network. And by definition, the virtual supply is the total amount of coin existence plus the total amount of VHP in existence. Now, the reason why that is, is because all VHP came from coin. And so if you didn't burn the coin to get the VHP, then all the tokens would still be coin. And so the virtual supply treats coin and VHP as one and one. All right, lastly, it's governance. Coinless governance is unlike any other governance mechanism out there. Most other smart contract platforms have a, a proof of stake style governance system where you get one token, one vote. Whereas governance on Coinos has a one block produce equals one vote, which means that only block producers can vote. If you're not producing blocks, you cannot have a say in the governance of the Coinos blockchain. So miners with VHP, the more VHP they have, the more blocks they produce in a year. And because one block equals one vote, the more blocks you produce, the more votes you get. All right, that's it with miners. Next up is the coin holders. Now, coin token holders have a unique play in this ecosystem. They are resource providers. They are the people who have mana because only liquid coin contains mana and mana is the life force that drives the smart contract forward. If you want to operate a smart contract, make a transaction, you need mana. And the only way to get mana is to get coin. Now, there are abstractions to that system, meaning that I can share my mana with you. So if you're a non-token holder, you don't have any coin, you're new to blockchain, 
I can actually share my mono with you and so that you can use the blockchain without having any uh, tokens in your wallet. That's a very important detail because that's exactly why coin holders are resource providers. So if you think that there's benefit to the system, then you're more likely to say, I wanna buy some coin today because potentially monos can become a scarce resource just like gas is a uh, kind of in-demand resource because it's the only resource that al allows you to use the Ethereum blockchain. The unique thing about Mana is that you don't actually lose your coin token in order to get it. It comes with coin, and when you consume Mana, it recharges back to 100%, really much like a rechargeable battery. So in order to have more capacity, you just hold more coin, and you can get more Mana, and you can run more contracts or run more, run more complicated contracts. The ultimate goal for coin holders is that they will eventually look and try to monetize their assets. And they'll do this by selling mana for money. It's not the same as a gas station because it's a zero sum game. On gas station, someone's donating that uh, token in order to allow you to buy gas. And eventually someone's losing money. Whereas on Coinos, no one's actually losing money by providing mana to you. If they allow you to use the mana, it's a matter of opportunity. They can't find any good use for it. And if you use it, it actually doesn't cost them to lose money. If they don't want to lose value through inflation, then they should participate in mining. Of course, there's a, there's a lot of mechanics at play here because if you can get a yield similar to mining, then maybe selling mana is a better deal. But we should expect users to want to sell mana at some point when the resource is more in demand than it currently is. Because right now, there are very, very few dApps Coinos is still a pretty early uh, newborn blockchain and still trying to plant its roots. The other thing is that coin holders ultimately fuel dApp growth. The reality is that you have to have resources in order to use any blockchain decentralized application. It's just, just the way blockchain works. And so if you need resources, you have to get it from coin holders. And so coin holders are the ones that fuel dApp growth. Now, the distinction here I want to make is that just because a coin holder is holding coin, they don't actually have to use dApps to make dApps better. They can give that mana to other users and other users can use applications making the Coinos ecosystem grow. Now on gas-based blockchains, the problem is that if you're a token holder, you don't actually get to help the ecosystem grow if you're not spending your tokens. Dapps on gas-based blockchains require every user to become a token holder in order for them to actually succeed, which makes it an extra step for dApps to really get off the ground. If you're a user and you don't have any tokens to pay for the gas fee, then as far as the dApps concerned, you're not a user because you have no way of paying gas fees. That's the principal problem in terms of getting mass adoption to dApps, aside from the fact that the dApp experience is lacking because of wallet issues. Um, however, a zero fee blockchain should be able to solve many of those problems um, that just were accepted in gas-based chains. All right, lastly, we're here to talk about dApp developers. Dapp developers, 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 developers. Everything is always about developers. Now, there's a couple of issues with existing blockchains that makes development really, really difficult. The first is the fact that everyone wants to run a EVM blockchain or a Ethereum virtual machine-based blockchain. It's difficult for most people to get involved because they need to learn solidity, but that's just a standard today. It will change over time. As a dApp developer, do you really want to be focused on getting users converted blockchain or do you want to convert your users to your application that's the challenge that dapp developers face on other blockchains now in coinos dapp developers need mana for their users they don't need coin as i said before mana can be shared with other users without transferring tokens to them without requiring them to purchase tokens and so dapp, DAP developers have a unique avenue to allow other users to use their applications who don't hold code tokens this feature is something that gas based blockchains have been trying to implement for a long time but they couldn't figure it out how to do it because none of them are zero fee based natively they're all gas based and so they have a really hard time developing these systems they pretty much have to start from scratch which is what coinos did uh, another important thing is that idle coin is wasted opportunity for dApp developers so it's likely that you'll see dApps try to get coin by uh, doing an I IDO or ICO and that way they can uh, sell their tokens for coin tokens and they can use that coin token to give uh, widespread free access however I generally tend to think that this probably won't work because there's going to be more dApps than there are coin to share um, so I think sharing mana which comes from coin it's going to be more of an infrastructure level process. Um, and uh, if you follow me on this page, if you've gotten this far in the video, follow me on this page. We're working on a solution to make that more uh, easier for users to acquire mana at a very, very infrastructure level. That's probably going to be the most likely scenario where dApps 
expect users to have mana and users have a way to acquire mana separate from um, the specific DAP they're trying to use. There's actually going to be a DAP out there specifically designed to help people get access to mana and that way they can actually use DAPs uh, across the entire ecosystem. All right, so those are the three main players of Coinos. Um, if you think there should be more, then please leave a comment below and I'll update this video and include them. The other thing I want to show you is this little um, three uh, Venn diagram uh, diagram that I created. And so each of these circles represents the type of users, the coin holders, DAP users, and the DAP developers themselves. And there's an intersection between each three of them that are important to make a comment on. So for example, um, DAP users and DAPs. In between, I have this area that's highlighted in orange, and I call this area, the um, this is where money is made for dApps. Because if dApp users can interact with dApps without having to buy tokens, then dApps developers can actually sell services that are not token-based to the users. I, I believe that this is going to be the way that most developers, most dApps are going to make money. They're going to interact with dApp users, and because of tokenless access, thanks to Mana, they're going to be able to sell services and goods to DAP users without having to force them to acquire the native coin token in order to pay for fees because there are no fees on Coinos. Now, as far as DAP users and coin holders go, I have this little blue line here and I wrote, this is where no coiners become token holders. And so DAP users that you know use the Coinos blockchain without holding tokens may have a really good experience and they may want to become token holders themselves so they can free themselves from any other uh, mana subscription model there may be. And they'll just go ahead and buy coin tokens. And the only way to get coin tokens for a non-token holder is from existing token holders who are getting them from an exchange or maybe they're miners. And so that's where the blue line occurs. Lastly, between coin holders and dApps is this pinkish, reddish uh, line. And I wrote, this is where money is made for coin holders on large infrastructure scale mana markets. DApps ultimately are looking to get their users mana. DApps may be looking to get mana for themselves. And so DApps are going to be getting that mana from the existing token holders. It's unlikely for a DApp to, to have so much coin that they can fuel usage across all of their DApps, unless it's a mega size um, developer. Uh, I just generally believe that you're probably going to get that piecemeal from users. Lastly, we have this, this trifecta intersection of all three. Now, this area is actually quite small and it converges DAP developers, coin holders, and DAP users. And I wrote that this is where the power users are for Web3 apps. They're the guys who are running DeFi, they're generating yield through uh, yield farming, they're mining. I mean, these are the uh, tip of the spear guys who are really interested in blockchain and are utilizing all the services available in order to have a good experience on blockchain. And this is just generally how I see the Qantas blockchain ecosystem working. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned a lot from it. If you're interested in watching more videos, feel free to subscribe. I do uh, talk mostly about blockchain and Coinos, um, and I will also be talking about some future projects that uh, my partner and I, Luke Willis from the Coin Price Podcast, were creating. Uh, we're both also the co-creators of BurnCoin.com. Um, you can actually generate yield through mining without running a node. Just check out BurnCoin.com. B-U-R-N-K-O-I-N.com. Uh, it's where you burn coin and earn coin, making it really simple to become a participant in securing the corner blockchain. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.